Hey, Posey Gloves here. And today we're gonna to be talking about infinite impulse response, finite impulse response, and linear phase filters. I'm wearing a hat. Let me really quick show you why this can matter. Here we have something, just a simple, innocent little saw wave. I choose it because it's very easy to see this application through when you see something like that. So let's go ahead. We'll turn on the fruity multiband compressor. We're gonna use infinite impulse response filters first. Let's see if this sounds like our original signal and it looks like our original signal. And we're like, hey, it's off. Let's turn it on. And that is, does not look like our original signal. So let's go ahead and change the filter to finite impulse response. And hey, we got our signal back. Now you've probably heard about this linear phase thing. And the, the linear phase though can only be as good as the filter type it's using. So let's go ahead. This is why I'm always saying filters are not equal. Let's go ahead and go to our Maximus here, right? I've turned off all the compressors. Literally the signal is just going through Maximus. That's it. And we have here this linear phase filters option. And I've even turned on oversampling. Let's turn it off first and see what happens to our signal. And we're like, whoa, that sounds different. And you can see even with it using, it's the filters sound different. Just, it just sounds different than the other one, even when it looked the same. So that's the interesting takeaway. And then we'll go over here. Let's turn on linear phase filters. What the junk is that? It looks totally different. And so we, we have these interesting options. Um, and when you grab plugins, they're going to impart their sound to it because stuff like this goes on. Now, I, now this is very exaggerated. When you throw complex waveforms into it, it's a lot harder to tell. So th instead, we refer to it as the filter's sound. But let's go ahead and look at one like Trash 2, right? You, it's a distortion module. So let's see what kind of filters they use for their dynamics processor. So I have it on. It should just be going straight through. And I turned on the multiband mode. So it's splitting the signal with various filters and trying to reconstruct it at the end, which is something that all three of these are doing, by the way. You'll notice they're all multiband. And so here we go. Whoa, that one sounds really different. And you hear a little wow at the beginning. And so if, I'm not sure, maybe in your listening career, you might not be that far along, but it's pretty obviously there. If you listen to the very beginning of the note, it goes wow, wow, it goes right at the beginning. And so it's kind of sort of an interesting thing. So like, hey, this is this is interesting. What's going on? Well, I'm always saying that filters aren't equal because they apply phase shifts to your signal. It's totally true. And there are different ways to there are different lots of different kinds of filters. And I only I understand very little, but I did read I tried reading some very academic papers and I took away what I could. And basically, when you switch your filter types, when you're mastering, you're going to want something that, you know, gives you your original signal back. Right. So this was actually designed with mastering in mind. And uh, that's why I like this. But sometimes I might reach for something like Maximus, which I do quite often. Why? Because I'm familiar with its sound. I know what it's going to do. And it imparts a coloration of the sound that I may enjoy. Maybe I want my stuff to have that sort of sound. And when we're listening to it with one sound, that's an unfair comparison. You need to run complex waves through here. You know, you just need to run a bunch of material through here. And really get a feel for what's happening. Because right now I'm painting it, or people will paint it as like, oh, this is terrible, la la la. They're just overreacting, okay? It's just a different sound. Now, if you want to be like super mega accurate, though, we can use something like this. Now, we could pull open the isotope stuff meant for mastering, and it's going to look great, of course, because they're going to be using filters that are going to do things like this. I just want to point this out to you as a thing. When you're mixing and you have things that impart sound, that's some of what's going on. And it's the way it breaks down your signal and puts your signal back together that happens. And it's usually during these transition bands. So when you grab an EQ, and, I, and I'm saying that EQ filters sound different, you might be going... You'd be tripping. Now you know that this can sound super different. So that's that. Now you know where some of the sound of certain things comes from. It can come largely from the filters. When you make EQ moves, when you use any sort of a filter, some of this is going to take place. It will happen to different degrees depending on the shape it uses. Remember, you use your ears, not your eyes. This I use the eyes here just to make it so that it's more easily identifiable with your ears. We could even take the time to listen to the ringing that happens with the different filters. And if I had a plugin, I'd probably do somewhere that allows me to change the filter types. We could even experiment and listen to different filter types and really just have loads of fun. But basically, you just got to find one you really like. That's why you may see me reach for sometimes the fruity uh, free filter versus the fruity fast low pass filter. They do their job differently. And I like that. So just that's just that. If you have any questions, again, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.